a lot easier ways to earn a living, and there's a lot easier ways to, you know, develop a career that isn't as messy and as exhausting as being a pastor. And there are times when, you know, we've launched capital campaigns and fallen short of the goal. And there are times when we've had what we thought were brilliant ideas and launched them with high hopes and they just fell flat and no, no one's life changed. And I mean, we have a Christian camp that we own and a young man drowned up there and I had to explain that situation to his parents. And what, what I'm trying to say is, you know, Pastoring is not for the faint of heart. And if you do it long enough and you get into a season that doesn't feel lifted, and if you feel like you're just carrying this thing on your back, I've driven home from our campus, I live seven minutes away, and I've had some, drive, some drives home that felt an hour long. And I was like, you're taking this too serious, you're crazy. You, you should have just stuck with the family business. <laughs> but, God has entrusted you, I remind you of my earlier remarks, God has entrusted you with what he treasures most in this world. Now, why he entrusted a group of people to me, I will never understand, I don't think I'm that trustworthy. <laughs> and you might doubt your own trustworthiness once in a while. But, he has in fact entrusted you with what he treasures the most. And he's gifted you. And he's given you his Holy Spirit. And every once in a while someone probably just has to say to you, you are not crazy for pouring your life into this. You are not crazy for enduring what you endure from season to season. You're not crazy for staying faithful to the Word of God when pastors are failing on the trustworthiness of Scripture right and left. You're not crazy for holding the line on certain moral issues that everyone's willing to cave on. Every once in a while you just need someone probably to tell you you're not crazy. And then this actually, that phrase came out of a of the mouth of a guy one time at Willow who I taught on the spiritual gifts and I I taught about the spiritual gift of giving and he got all ignited and realized that was his primary gift and he made huge investments in our church and in other ministries around the world and several years after he had told me he had discovered his gift of giving he asked me to go out to lunch and we were going out to lunch and or sitting at the lunch table, and, and he said, uh, I said, you okay, because you look troubled. And he said, well, I, I'm in a little bit of trouble. He said, my business partner thinks I'm crazy because I'm giving all this money to kingdom stuff. My lawyers think I'm crazy. My accountants think I'm crazy. My kids think I'm crazy. I just need someone to look across the lunch table at me and tell me I'm not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And I look, I said, you are not. This is your gift. This is what God, this is your role in the kingdom, is to be a kingdom venture capitalist. <laughs> it's to earn all you can earn, live on as little as you can live on, so that you can make massive investments in kingdom wide you know, deals. So you're not crazy. And that phrase stuck in my mind, and I've had the same conversation with hundreds of pastors who get all beaten down and discouraged and all that, and they go, I think I'm taking this too seriously. I must be crazy. Oh, you're not crazy. You're, you're, you know, I, 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 this is probably obvious to to someone who's as effective as a, a, a teacher as you are, George, but we, we, we get into a mindset where we think this ought to be easier than it is. And Ephesians reminds us that we have an enemy that works 24-7 to oppose every single effort we make to advance the purposes of God. And he's serious. And he's trying to defeat 
what we're trying to advance. And when you have a full-time serious enemy, and then you have human frailty, as I have so much of, and then when it all doesn't go as well as you hoped it would, that's a recipe for discouragement. And just, you know, note to you and note to me, people don't want to follow a discouraged pastor. Everybody keys their emotions off the emotions of the pastor. So if you live in a defeated state, people just go, I guess it's cool to be defeated. I guess it's all right. And I tell pastors all the time, do whatever you have to do. Read whatever you have to read. Hang around whoever you have to hang around to go to wherever you have to go to stay fired up as a pastor. Because everyone wants to follow a fired up pastor. I'm not asking you to, you know, put your finger in a light socket or anything like that. I'm just saying that when people sense a, a, a faith-based optimism in you, when people sense that you've been with God enough to stay on the faith side of things and instead of on the pessimistic side of things, they want to be around you, they want to follow your leadership, they want to make investments in this optimistic dream for God's glory that you're leading them into. And uh, I was in George's church one time. He felt sorry for me and invited me down because he felt I was bored or something. And so I uh, gave a very forgettable talk in his church. But he has so many people who are recovering addicts in his church. I wish you could all, have you all been there? Maybe. The place was electric. Because George's life story is one of redemption and optimism that God can do anything. And he's got a congregation that has experienced so much recovery. And they key into George's optimism. Now, the place was on fire that night. No help coming from me. Uh, that's, that's a church that, you know, that keys off the life experience and, and the faith story of its pastor. And so I would encourage you to do whatever you need to do to stay fired up, to stay on the faith-filled side of things, tell people God, God is still strong, the Holy Spirit still has his stuff, the gospel still transforms people's lives, the church is still the hope of the world. And you keep beating that drum and good things will happen.